Mein Liebster singt from Hugo Wolf's Italian songbook. The singer there was Julia Kleiter with Hilko Dumno at the piano. And that Challenge Classics disc, on which Kleiter is joined by Christophe Prigardien, is one of the three contenders in the solo vocal category of this year's Gramophone Classical Music Awards, presented in association with Steinway & Sons. I'm James Jolly, Gramophone's Editor-in-Chief, and I'm joined by Richard Fairman to talk about the three recordings vying for that award. Now let's come back to the Wolf disc and work our way backwards chronologically. So we start with a disc from NMC of songs by Richard Rodney Bennett. Now this ranges quite widely through Bennett's output from Tom of Bedlam from 1961 to A Song of Evening from just two years ago. Now what struck me particularly here, though I guess it does whenever I encounter Bennett's music, is how amazingly versatile he is. We have several Richard Rodney Bennett's here on this disc, don't we? Not just one. The Songs Before Sleep, which gives the CD its title, is wonderful, very English music to my ears. Uh, this could just be Britain at a big push. And then if you go back to the Tom of Bedlam song, and that, of course, was written for Peter Pears. Uh, and, and it's the grittiest piece on the disc really isn't it? Yes it is in fact I would say it's the only gritty piece on the disc so people needn't be worried it's 13 minutes and it's it's almost like a little solo cantata for a tenor and solo cello very unusual. Peter Pears was the first performer and it's it's just written for his voice in the way that any Britain piece is and I have to say that I absolutely loved it. So uh, gritty, yes, but wonderful too. It reminded me a little bit of Stravinsky, the way the, way the words were set. Yes, uh, perhaps because I love Stravinsky's songs, uh, that's why I like it. But, but I think we should make it clear to anybody who's thinking of buying the disc that the majority of the disc is really very appealing. It's music which sets up immediate atmospheres which are attractive and unusual in, in a way that a song composer has to if they're going to make each song come alive individually and yet in a way that is Richard Rodney Bennett's own. And it just teeters sort of on the edge of tonality, but just stays this side, if that's quite the right way of putting it. It does. You won't quite come away humming the tunes, but for all that, you come away feeling that you have lived in this song and that you want to go back to it and hear it again. Now, there are a number of different singers uh, on the disc. I mean, I was particularly drawn to Roderick Williams singing the songs before sleep, which are essentially sort of nursery, nursery rhymes, but given different tunes. I think his diction is absolutely wonderful. You hear every single word. You do. I mean, I always think when I hear him how undervalued he is. He was one of the major singers in Pilgrim's Progress when Richard Hickox did that up at Sadler's Wells. And he absolutely commanded the theatre because you hear every word. The voice is so well focused. And here he is yet again giving his exceptional talents and voice to to a disc which I think deserves it and on which he he shines. And we should mention the pianist throughout, Ian Burnside, who I suspect was the kind of mover and shaker behind this disc. And what a marvellous programme he's put together. We should also mention Susan Bickley, who I loved singing the dream songs. Uh, these are settings of Walter de la Mer. They set up a world of their own which is very magical and beautiful and seductive. And I can only say that people should really go out and hear this disc. It I, is wonderful, isn't it? I didn't know many Richard Rodney Bennett songs before I came to this disc, and now I love it and I shall keep it and play it again, uh, and I recommend it heartily. Now, there's a link between the uh, Richard Rodney Bennett disc and the second one, which is Benjamin Britten's Songs and Proverbs of William Blake, sung by Gerald Finley with Julius Drake at the piano for Hyperion, because there's a, a sort of folky nursery rhyme element here, and then also settings of Walter de la Mer, which uh, Bennett also set. There are. Uh, I think the, the nursery rhyme folk element is round the fringes, if I may say so. Uh, well, it is rather sugaring the pill, isn't it, this, this disc? It is, because the major work in the centre of it is the Songs and Proverbs of William Blake, which Britain wrote for Dietrich fischer dieskau in the 1960s, and which caught him at his grittiest and most concentrated. And I suspect that's one of the reasons we hear it so rarely live in recital. 
I mean, it's tremendous anger, isn't there? An anger and sort of resentment that just scorches through the music. There is. It's the kind of work that you feel very impressed when you hear it, but you don't want to rush back and hear it again soon. At least that's how you generally feel. But what makes this recording of it so unusual and special is that I think it introduces a sympathetic quality and a warmth that we perhaps haven't heard before, and which I'm inclined to think really should be there. After all, these poems by Blake, while they have Old Testament anger written all over them, they, they do also require some Christian warmth to balance it. And this is where I think Gerald Finley's beautiful and well-moulded singing with his wonderful warm baritone, which is surely now at its peak, comes into its own and gives us a new way into this cycle, which perhaps we haven't had before on disc. And the other self-contained work, I suppose, on this disc is Tit for Tat, which is um, five Walter de la Mer settings. Slightly different, but, but still quite forceful. Quite forceful. I mean, written when he was quite young, of course. And two cycles which were not written for Peter Pears. And I assume that's why Gerald Finley and Julius Drake have brought them together here. And then, as we said at the beginning, they have woven round them some of the less familiar folk songs and less familiar songs such as Um Mitternacht, which have just started being recorded a little more often, making really a very enterprising programme. The thing that struck me about the, the songs, the surrounding songs, as it, as it were, was Gerald Finley's ability to tell a story. He's a real, he's got real narrative qualities, particularly in a song, long song like The Crocodile, which is quite involved. And he just takes, as it were, takes you by the hand and guides you through this fantastic yarn. He does. And as we were saying with Roderick Williams, how wonderfully clear his words are. It is fantastic. Another singer where you can hear every word and what a difference it makes. There's a wind where the rose was, called rain where sweet grass was, and clouds like sheep stream o'er the steep grey skies where the Not gold where your hair was, not warm where your hand was, but fat to follow your gold. Now for the third disc we jump back to the end of the 19th century to about 1892 for Hugo Wolf's Italian songbook, the Italianisches Liederbuch, which is a, a long cycle, it's about 75 minutes all, for two voices, a tenor and a soprano, obviously with a piano accompaniment. And this is Christoph Pregardien and Julia Kleiter with Hilko Dumno at the piano. Richard, what did you make of this? What interests me is that as somebody who has been voting in the Gramophone Awards for really rather a long time, longer probably than I should own up to, there hardly seems to be a year go by without Christoph Pregardien doesn't make it to the shortlist in the solo vocal section. And that tells us something. He's been around quite a long time. And for me, the real virtue of this disc is how well he understands how to tackle this quite long and difficult work in a way that is neither over-emphasising the contrasts and details in the songs and yet still manages to give each one a character of its own. I think it's a lifetime's experience that has taught him this middle way that enables him to both bring individual songs to life and also within the context of the entire cycle to make sense of the thing as a whole. Now, he's matched on this disc by a singer from a, a much younger generation, Julia Kleiter, who has really only sort of appeared on the scene in the last few years. I mean, do you think they, do you think they work well together? Not that they actually ever sing together. Well, I think they do, because she, I suspect, has learnt from him or taken from him the kind of style that he works with, in that she's neither over-exaggerated nor is she under-characterised. So the two of them follow a very successful middle path through the cycle. Against that, it does seem to me that there are times in which he sounds rather pushed and strained. Uh, this isn't something that came out in the original review in Gramophone, but it has bothered me listening to it again for the awards. And what about uh, Hilko Dumno, who sort of steers us through? I thought, that was, I thought it was very sensitively accompanied. It is. Uh, he, he matches very well with both of them. There is no question that this is a disc in which the music has been very thoroughly considered by everybody and is put across really to the very best abilities of everybody concerned. I mean, how do you think one should tackle a, a thing like this? I mean, do you think sit down and listen to it from end to end or dip in, maybe have a group of four or five songs perhaps? Well, I think most of us who go to live recitals a lot are used to encountering the Italian songbook and the Spanish songbook in small groups. 
I grew up with Schwarzkopf singing groups of songs from each songbook and I have to say that was the best way for me because I really got to know small groups of songs first before I went in to tackle the thing as a whole. That was Sterbich, sung by Christophe Prigardien with Hilko Dumno at the piano. It comes from Hugo Wolf's Italian songbook with Julia Kleiter singing the soprano songs. A challenge classics release, and that along with Britain from Gerald Finlay and Julius Drake on Hyperion, and the collection of songs by Richard Rodney Bennett on NMC completes the field for this year's Solo Vocal Award. All will be revealed on October the 6th. For more information about this or any of the other categories, just log on to Gramophone. .co.uk. Thanks for listening and thanks to Richard Fairman, especially as he's battling a nasty cold.